bringing the people behind our food to life. You say we have the means. We do have the means, right. To, to make it better. Do we have the will? I don't know. I mean, I'm an optimist. My middle name is Hope. It's a family name. Um, here at this conference, and when I go to speak to the, to the organic farmers and the environmentalists and the, um, so many of the young people, I am filled with hope and expectation that it'll be OK. Because they really, they're on this, you know. There are, then I'm, you know, I'm, in other places, and I just see this blindness and this, and this need to, to disregard the needs of others, and I'm concerned. I don't have an answer to that question. What is it that you hope? It doesn't matter what I think. I, I was very, very depressed for a while. Writing the book, doing the work, it does bring you up against some very um, tough problems. and human nature being what it is, uh, sometimes you realize that we can do great damage to ourselves and, and, and to uh, the places where we live. Um, there's a lot of violence and immorality in the world. Um, I'd get really down and I was talking to a friend and I said, I don't know, I don't think we're going to make it. And she said, you know, Claire, you really love the earth. And if there was a friend that you loved that was dying, you wouldn't leave their bedside. You'd stay there, you'd offer care, you'd offer that love, you'd hang in there. And that was my answer. I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to do everything I can with the right attitude of, of love and concern, but reality, too, because the situation is extremely perilous. But, um, but I want to just, I want to hang in there and, and work with my community. We just have to get down with our communities and talk to each other. At the ending of my book, I talk about the importance of story. All the great creation myths of the peoples of the world have in them the answers to the question of what we're doing here, what's our right relationship with each other, and the, and the world, the, the natural world. And in it are always, almost always, instructions for the relationships we need to ha carry on and how to be respectful and reciprocal. And I might add generous, you know. And even in the biblical creation myth that a lot of the Western uh, thinking is based on from the Bible has some very interesting instructions about what we are supposed to be doing here. And it's been misinterpreted. Okay, and we can fight about it, but I'd love to fight about it. You know, we got that's the argument we need to have. You know, but I also go to the creation myths of other peoples, and I see that food is often the way that the creator of each culture, each place in the world, corn in the Americas, potatoes in South America, rice in Southeast Asia, the wheats and lentils and barley in the Fertile Crescent, all of these things came up individually, um, uh, um, separately. Okay, as a, as a result of a relationship between people, plants, and place. Okay, and it's that intimate connection between culture and agriculture which gave us all the foods that we rely on. Okay, and but so the stories say we have this, uh, this gift, corn for instance, but it comes with a responsibility. And, and indigenous people know that if we take care of corn, if we respect corn, corn will provide for us, right? But we have disrespected corn. We've turned it into a machine, and now we're feeding it to our machines, right? The Santa, in the, my, my book, I have a whole chapter called A Conversation with Corn. And I, I tell the story of the Hopi creation myth, because it tells us a lot about, about who we are. And it tells, you know, the Hopi who they are. But, it, it ends with a song of, um, from the Santo Domingo of Pueblo. These are, these are the corn cultures of the Southwest who really understand the relationship between people and the gifts of the Creator, these great foods that we've been given. And each culture has been given their own food and their own instructions. 
And um, it's a song where the corn sings to the people. And it says, at harvest time, it says, welcome back. We've been expecting you to come. Come take us and take us home where we can rest. And it's a beautiful tribute to the understanding of the reciprocity and the sacredness of that relationship between people, culture, food, the land, you know? And if we get back to that, every culture has it, every place has got a lot of cultures in it, if we can get back to that, we can figure out what the stories are that we need to tell about the places where we live. So even if we've got a dying partner, let's sit down together in, maybe we're feeling the grief of loss, and we're going to start telling those great stories. And then we're going to retell those stories to have, it, you know, who, they always, the expression about stories is whoever tells the story gets to, you know, create the ending, right? So if we take back our stories and bring in the stories, I bet you your ancestors had stories and everybody has them. Let's tell each other our stories and let's find the answers through story and through, the, and through that. And I really believe that we will come up with the right way forward.